This is Ghosts and Demons, a 2015 fan-made game for PC created by Bonus Jay-Z. Being a remake of the Japanese exclusive Wonder Swan Ghosts and Goblins, it follows the original game's formula closely. It also adds many of its own new additions, including updated mechanics and a significantly steeper difficulty curve. The game as a result can be challenging for new players to adapt to, quite possibly more so than any other game in the Ghosts and Goblins series. A key to succeeding at this game is getting in tune with its many game mechanics. For those trying the game for the first time, or for those that need a refresher, here's a quick guide to get you up to speed with this game. As with prior Ghosts and Goblins games, you control Arthur, who has his typical left and right movement along with ducking and jumping. While there's no vertical attacking as with Ghouls and Ghosts, Arthur does retain his double jump from Super Ghouls and Ghosts, activated by simply tapping jump a second time while in mid-air. Arthur also has a ground stomp, activated by pressing down plus jump in the air. Landing next to enemies with this does a little bit of splash damage, hurting enemies on either side. Landing on top of enemies does considerable damage and bounces Arthur back into the air. Doing so successfully resets your double jump, allowing for some nice shortcuts through the game when used creatively. The downside to the ground stomp is that it can only be used with armor. However, even without it, Arthur can hop off enemies when timed properly. This is quite risky, but can be used as a last resort if you make a jump in the wrong direction. It does considerable damage, and you can keep hopping from enemy to enemy as long as you don't double jump. Arthur also has the ability to backflip, a maneuver that's mapped to its own button. Arthur can use this to get to higher platforms easier, or to avoid tricky projectile patterns. He can even perform the maneuver in the air to gain extra height. Smacking enemies in the face with a foot is also possible and does solid damage. This is risky, but can be especially useful against the red armors. On the easy and normal difficulty levels, the backflip also has a significant amount of invincibility frames at the start of it, allowing Arthur to pass through objects and projectiles when timed just right. A key move for survival is pressing the jump button right as Arthur loses his armor. This makes Arthur shout aloud, giving you extra invincibility time. Normally when taking a hit, you only have a few moments of invincibility frames. When performing this special trick, Arthur gets significantly more invincibility time. The easiest way to do this is to mash the jump button immediately upon taking a hit. Much like previous games in the series, Arthur can uncover various chests in each level. These are typically activated by jumping at a certain position, sometimes by double jumping. The red chests encountered drop various types of items. Weapons are the typical fare, but a warlock or goddess can appear as well. The warlocks can turn Arthur into various creatures like in previous games, but the effect stays significantly longer here, so be careful. The goddess will offer an invincibility power-up for a significant amount of time. Like the original Ghosts and Goblins, Warlocks can also appear by shooting specific objects too many times, such as tombstones, so be careful about shooting around randomly when there are no enemies on screen. Unlike prior games in the series, the contents of red chests are completely random. Under normal circumstances, this means that there is no rhythm or rhyme to what appears. Sometimes you'll get a weapon, sometimes you'll get armor, sometimes you'll get points. There is, however, a more advanced trick to guarantee an armor drop. This is done by uncovering four red chests and intentionally not opening them. Your fifth red chest will have armor in it, guaranteed. Green chests can also appear, and each level has at least one or two of these. Green chests offer guaranteed armor drops. If Arthur has no armor, silver armor will appear. If Arthur has silver armor, then gold armor will appear. If Arthur already has gold armor, a 10,000 point item appears. Other hidden chests can appear for extra lives. These appear in most levels in the game and typically require Arthur to stand in front of a specific location for at least a few seconds. On Stage 1, it's this Tombstone. On Stage 2, it's this Suit of Armor. On Stage 3's Water Level, it's in front of this Clam. On Stage 3's Fire Level, it's at the end of the last vertical shaft. On Stage 5, it's to the right of the boss door. 
On the final stage, it's right before the big drop to the boss. Stages 2 and 4 also have extra chests right out in the open. For stage 2, Arthur needs to perform a ground stomp on an enemy and double jump over this column. On stage 4, it's at the top left of the first major platforming section. Due to the game's difficulty, it's recommended you start on easy. Easy mode features slightly fewer random enemies and there are also added checkpoints. On Normal and King modes, checkpoints only appear at hard screen transitions. Easy also adds more continues over Normal, giving you more time to warm up to the harder parts of the game. Money bags also increase the amount of credits you have on any given run, so in the early stages of learning the game, it's good to grab as many as you can. Weapons have always been a huge part of the Ghosts and Goblins series, and Ghosts and Demons is no exception, with Arthur having a wide-ranging arsenal to work with. Starting with the classic Lance, Arthur can fire this at a moderate pace, doing moderate damage. The dagger is relatively weak, but has the benefit of shooting multiple projectiles across the screen quickly. The torch is a strong weapon with an arced attack that allows for more shot flexibility, not to mention large blasts of fire that erupt when landing on the ground. The axe is one of the least useful weapons in the game, but it can be solid for enemies positioned higher up. The arrows act much like they do in the Wonderswan and Super Nintendo games, offering poor damage output and being difficult to use against small enemies up close. This weapon, however, is very efficient against the red armors. The discus is a short-range weapon that packs a major punch when used right. The sickle is a short-range weapon that turns into a long-range one when it loops back around towards the player. The shield is a great crutch for new players, going all the way across the screen and blocking most projectiles along the way. Last but not least is the cross, the best base weapon in the game. This short-range weapon is tricky to use, but packs the biggest punch, absorbs projectiles, and also goes through solid objects. A special weapon, the Holy Flame, can randomly appear after you reach 300,000 points. This weapon goes all the way across the screen, destroys projectiles, and can even charge up two different attacks with the gold armor. Like in Super Goals and Ghosts, the charging makes you invincible for a second or two after. Don't expect to see this weapon at all in the early stages of learning the game, but it's something to aim for as you improve. Weapons aside, the biggest upgrade in the game is the gold armor. This allows Arthur to throw even more projectiles at a time. It also gives him some useful new abilities. Pressing up plus attack while on the ground allows Arthur to stab enemies in front of him. Jumping and pressing down plus attack allows him to downstab, doing tons of damage and pogoing off enemies' heads. Pressing up plus backflip allows Arthur to perform an uppercut, a strong attack that can do multiple hits when used properly. So with that, you should now have a good idea of the basics of Ghosts and Demons. Get in there, search for hidden chests, learn the stages and bosses, and ultimately just have a good time. For anybody curious about checking out this game, it's a free download for PC. Simply check the description box below for a link to the developer's website. I'd also like to give a shout out to Aquas who got me interested in this game, provided some extra details for this video, and let me use some of his stream footage. Shout out to Skip Natty as well, who also helped with loads of tips on my initial stream of this game. Without this help, I wouldn't have gotten up to speed with the game so quickly. Lastly, I'd like to give a shout out to Solid Nate here on YouTube. He checked out the game after I initially streamed it, and he's been hooked on it ever since. Him constantly streaming it has motivated me to keep playing the game after my initial session with it. Be sure to check the description box to links to their various Twitch and YouTube channels. I especially recommend the ultimate challenge run played by Aquas that can be found on his channel. That mode is utterly ridiculous, and even if you don't plan on playing the game yourself, I can at least assure you that the absurdity of that mode will keep you glued to the screen. So with that, thanks for watching. 
If you would like to see more content like this, check out the first video in this series where I showed the different strategies to the boss counters of the original Castlevania. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And with that said, until the next one, take it easy.